Okay. In the previous sessions, we have uh, discussed or uh, we have begin a discussion on module four. So the contents I would like to brief out what we have covered in the previous session are input output organization, accessing the I/O devices, interrupt uh, interrupts, interrupt hardware, enabling the interrupts, direct memory access, and bus arbitration. So these were the contents what we have discussed previously. To continue further, uh, we are, we are left out with the topics uh, uh, regarding the memory system, cache memories, and uh, the mapping functions related to the cache uh, memories. Okay, so this particular content we will uh, we will try to cover in this particular session, right? So the uh, I would like to uh, cover the following contents in this particular session: uh, speed, size, cost of memory systems cache memory and mapping functions. First, we shall begin a discussion on the speed, size and cost of the memory system. So, we know that already this particular content was discussed in the module uh, uh, 1, uh, module 3. Okay. So, this particular we are going to define the basic concepts related to the memory. So, we have discussed previously that the memory uh, basically the maximum uh, the memory it is going to store uh, it is a storage unit for storing our programs and the instructions and the data that is needed for execution of the programs. So here basically uh, the maximum size of the uh, memory e that can be used in any computer is determined by the addressing scheme. So usually we are going to tell it is said to be uh, byte addressable. So, in terms of 16 bit, 32 bit or uh, uh, 64 and so on. So, this particular the memory the uh, arrangement we have seen that there are two types of arrangements of memory uh, in the previous sessions that is the byte addressability that is uh, the byte addressability can be defined in terms of big Indian and little Indian uh, assignment. So, this particular this is the arrangement of different uh, words in a memory and uh, in this particular big Indian. So, as we can see the lower order bytes of the data it is going to occupy the lower order bytes it is going to occupy uh, the higher uh, addresses here and uh, uh, whereas here the lower uh, order bytes are going to ad occupy the lower addresses. So, the, those were the two different forms of memory assignments. Okay, so most uh, uh, try to most of the computers are said to be byte addressable, and uh, the maximum length, the word length, the maximum uh, amount of uh, number of bits that can be accessed during one operation that is called as the word length. Okay, so just we are trying to revise the basic concepts of the memory. So here we are having some uh, concepts related to the memory. Uh, what do you mean by the bulk transfer or uh, block transfer? So, whenever we are having a contiguous data to be transferred, contiguous memory locations to be transferred from the memory to the processor, so that is called as the block transfer. Okay. So, here only the starting address of the memory, uh, starting address from where the to where the data has to be sent will be sent as an information. Okay. So, the next in order to measure the uh, memory time, so we are having two measurable units called as the memory access time and memory cycle time. So, memory si access time it is nothing but it is defined as the time elapsed between the initiation of uh, uh, one operation to the, uh, uh, to the completion of that same operation, the time between the initiation and the completion. So, next is the memory cycle time, this is another uh, form of measurable uh, unit. So, where it is defined as the time delay between two successive memory operations. So, the usually this memory cycle time is greater than the access time. So, next we are going to the biggest issue when we are going to study the concepts of the memory is the designing of the uh, designing of the memory. So, a uh, big challenge is to design a computer system to provide a sufficiently large memory with a reasonable speed at an affordable cost. Okay. So, these are the different forms of memories what uh, we, we can try to distinguish the static memories. The static memories are usually these are very fast, 
but uh, these are uh, expensive these are expensive and uh, because of the complexity of the circuits and uh, next uh, the dynamic ram these are um, these are uh, uh, these can store more data compared to the static ram and are less uh, expensive and uh, if we are going to compare the speed so this is a uh, less uh, slower than the static memory right so next we are having the third uh, form of memory is the secondary storage devices called as the magnetic disk so when we compare the size parameter here the size it is going to it, it is capable of storing the bulk data but when we try to compare with respect to the uh, speed this is very uh, uh, this is much slower when compared to the uh, dynamic drams or the static ram right the same thing can be explained in the form of a figure here so this uh, figure represents the memory hierarchy in terms of speed size and cost okay so here we are having within the processor another form uh, here within the processor we are having another form of memory right so here within the processor we are having a uh, uh, type of uh, uh, memory uh, storage units called as the registers and the primary cache l1 and an another form of uh, uh, cache l2 so whenever the cache is present within the uh, within the processor so that is called as the l1 level 1 cache and uh, outside the processor that is uh, between the main memory and that of the processor we can to uh, we can see the l2 cache and this is the magnetic storage or the secondary memory right so when we are going to compare in terms of three uh, parameters the size cost and uh, size speed uh, size and cost per bit so this particular as we go from the bottom to the top here the magnetic this the speed it is going to increase that means these are much slower compared to the main memory and uh, this is much slower compared to the uh, cache memory and that of the uh, register so the uh, speed is going to increase as we go from uh, 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 bottom to the top and also we as we know that the in terms of uh, cost per bit the cost uh, the memory hierarchy tells that the magnetic storage it can store bulk storage it is having the capability to store uh, a large amount of data but the cost is less when compared to that of the cost of the uh, main mem uh, memory ram or what we call the static uh, ram cell okay so here as we go from the bottom to the top okay bottom to the top the cost is increasing that is the ram is more costlier than the disk than the magnetic storage disk and uh, this is with respect to the speed and cost and uh, as we are going to speak in terms of the size the size is this is capable of storing few bits of data uh, when compared to this this is having uh, this is uh, capable of storing more data than this one and uh, this bulk storage capability is the magnetic storage devices right so therefore we are now in this hierarchical uh, memory hierarchy diagram it represents the size cost and uh, size uh, speed size and cost so i repeat see the cost per bit is going to increase uh, as we are going to go from the bottom to the top and the uh, uh, speed of operation okay uh, size is going to increase and the speed is going to uh, increase from bottom to the top right so this is what we call it as the memory hierarchy right so now uh, because as we have learned that uh, the particular uh, uh, now we are required to get into what we call it as the cache memories so this as we know that whenever the data uh, whenever the uh, program needs to be executed all the instructions and the data has to be loaded from the secondary storage into the main memory so the uh, it uh, the processor always uh, the um, the processor is much faster when compared to the memory so the processor often needs to wait for each instruction to be got from the main memory so the processor much effective time of the processor will be wasted in uh, uh, waiting for the instructions and the data 
So, instead the another uh, form of uh, memory is being used which is intermediate between the CPU and the main memory. So, this cache whatever the particular uh, whenever frequently used data and instructions can be kept in the cache. So, that it can it can be provided to the processor whenever it is uh, uh, it is particular uh, it is going to need. So, that the performance of the system can be increased at a faster rate. Okay. So, that is the intention of introducing what we call the cache memory. right? So, this particular cache memory so, this particular cache memory processor is much faster than the main memory. As a result, the processor has to spend much of its waiting time while, uh, while the instructions are da and data has been fetched from the main memory. So, therefore, in order to cut short the waiting period for the processor, the cache memory is said to be introduced. So, major obstacle towards achieving good performance, the speed of main memory cannot be however increased beyond a certain point. So, therefore, the cache memory is an architectural arrangement which makes the main memory faster uh, to the processor than it is really it is. Okay. So, therefore, in order to make the uh, processor get the program executed faster, uh, so this particular cache memory is said to be provided. So, now we will see the concepts related to the cache memory. Right. So, the cache uh, we know that the size of the main memory it is uh, the size of the cache is said to be less than the main memory. So, all the contents that is there in the main memory cannot be loaded into the cache. So, when an analysis if you are going to consider the uh, uh, when we are going to consider the uh, execution of the particular uh, when we are going to consider the when we are going to consider the execution of the particular uh, ca uh, cache, uh, all the programs that are uh, loaded into the memory cannot be uh, stored in the cache. So, an analysis of the program will be carried out. So, uh, the instructions which are frequently used by the processor during the execution and uh, which memory locations are frequently accessed. So, that analysis is being carried out and therefore, the cache is uh, based on the principle of lo uh, locality. So, this particular cache memory it is based on the property of computer programs called as the locality of reference. So, L O R it is called as the locality of reference. So, analysis of the program as I mentioned. So, entire uh, main memory can content could not be stored in the cache to reduce that the important part of the program is being uh, found out. Okay. So, that is called as the analysis of the program which is being frequently used. Analysis of the program indicates that many instructions in certain localized areas have been frequently executed and uh, which are frequently referred, referred okay, uh, repeatedly during some period of time while the others are accessed very less frequently. For example, the subroutines. Okay. So, certain instructions in a loop, nested loop or for loop, while loop, certain statements will be executed repeatedly or certain functions calling itself or certain procedures calling another procedures repeatedly. So, all these are examples of repetitive statements. So, because these every time it will be repeated and fetched from the main memory. So, therefore, so such components, so such instructions can be stored in the cache to reduce the waiting time of the processor. So, therefore, to identify the program segments which are uh, frequently used, the cache uses a principle of locality of reference. Okay. So, this there are uh, two types of locality of reference. So, this temporal locality types of locality of reference. The uh, temporal locality, it is a type of loca uh, reference, locality of reference, which is uh, telling that recently executed instruction is likely to be executed again very soon. For example, if you are going to take a for loop, within a for loop you are having some increment statement for some uh, condition i is equal to i plus 1. That i plus 1 may be uh, used up in the first state, uh, first when i is equal to 1, i is equal to 2 repetitively that same statement or same memory location will be used. 
So, that is an example of the temporal locality. Spatial locality tells that if a location, memory location, um, instructions which addresses close to recently used instructions may, might be used again. What is the meaning of spatial locality? For example, if a um, if an instruction at location i plus 1 is used, in the next iteration the, uh, the particular instruction at uh, the location i plus 2, it can be used once again. Okay. So, this are the two types of locality of references which are used by the cache to get the relevant contents from the main memory into the cache. Okay. So, now you can see in this particular cache. So, this, this is the CPU, this is the main memory of 1 gigawatt. So, this cache it is a smaller size when compared to that of the main memory. So, this particular cache it is uh, having capable of storing certain information from the main memory. Okay. So, now this particular cache what did the processor, the cache is between the processor and the main memory. The, the processor the processor issues a read request of, uh, then the when the processor issues a read uh, request to the cache a block of words is transferred from the main memory into the cache one word at a time so then whatever the process whatever the information that is requested will be made available to the processor so therefore this is the architectural modification that has been uh, used to increase the cpu performance right so this particular so here you can see this is the cache hit and cache miss so there is another term that is associated with the cache hit and cache miss so what it is, what do you mean by the hit and miss so whenever we have seen here whenever the required information by our application which is running in the processor if the required data is found in the cache Okay, then we call it as a cache hit. Okay, hit can be either read or write. This, okay, so whenever we are having the particular, uh, whenever uh, the required content by the application program, it is not there available in the readily in the cache, then we say that the information is missing. So, there, therefore, you are going to, it is called as the cache miss. Okay. So, uh, cache hit, I repeat, whenever the information is ma made available, information required, that is the instructions or the data that is required by our application, if it is readily available in the cache, we call it as a cache hit. If it is uh, not available in the cache, then it has to be got from the, it has to be fetched from the main memory and in that case, it is called, it will be a miss. Okay. So, then the required data will be loaded into the cache and again it will be made available to the uh, application logic. Okay. So, this is the concept of what you call the hit and the miss. Right? So, the cache hit we are going to discuss if the data in the cache is, uh, if the data is in the cache it is called as the cache hit as I told, if the data is in the cache it is called as a cache hit. Okay. Cache hit can either be a read or a write hit. What do you mean by read hit? The data is obtained from the cache. The data is read from the cache. It is therefore, it is called as a read hit. So, uh, write hit, the cache has a replica of the contents of the main memory. Whatever the contents are available in the main memory, that uh, copy of it is also maintained in the cache memory, so that it can be made available to the processor. Okay. So, here we are having copy, whatever the copy that needs to be sent to the main memory, it is also stored in the cache. So, we are having two forms of uh, write uh, protocol, uh, write uh, hit. So, that is what we call two rules to be followed. So, we call it as a write through protocol and write back protocol. So, what is the difference between the write through protocol and the write back protocol? So, in the write through protocol, we are having both the updations done parallelly in the uh, what we call whenever a uh, uh, block of information or a cache block is written in the cache, same thing from the pr processor, it has been uh, from the processor, it has been updated from the processor, uh, the content is been updated both in, in the cache and in the main memory also. right? So, whereas in the uh, write back protocol, the updations are reflected only in the cache and uh, later when the cache 
is said to be replaced when the cache is said to be replaced the modifications are done in the main memory okay i repeat what is the uh, write back protocol so this write back protocol it is a form of updation in which the whenever the content results that are returned from the main memory are updated only in the cache and later when that same block is replaced in the main memory then the contents will be updated in the main memory later it will be updated not simultaneously so that is called as the write back protocol okay so this is all about the cache hit so next uh, similarly we are having the uh, cache miss operation if the data is not present in the cache so then a read or a write miss is going to occur so read miss what do you mean by read miss the required content is not available in the cache block so then from where it has to be got it has to be got from the main memory it has to be got from the uh, main memory and it has to be loaded see here it has to be gotted from the got from the main memory and it has to be loaded into the cache so this is called as the uh, uh, read miss okay so when a required data is not available in the cache so it will be fetched from the main memory into the cache and also if it can be forwarded parallelly to the uh, application uh, to the processor okay so that is called as a load through load through protocol okay so this is called as the cache miss operations how it is handled okay so uh, in the case of write miss write through protocol or write back protocol is used to handle the write miss in the cache as i told you whenever there is uh, the required information is not uh, uh, available uh, when the processor wants to update certain contents it can alone update in the cache or it can update parallelly in the uh, cache and the main memory so respectively accordingly the write through or the write back protocol can be employed so this is all about what we call the uh, particular uh, it is all about what you call as the uh, cache uh, operations which are called as a cache hit and miss operations okay so next whenever the cache uh, at any given point of time what what do we mean by the cache mapping function so next we have to study about the cache mapping function so as we have seen that entire content of the particular main memory it cannot be stored in the cache okay only limited amount of what we call the data or required amount of data can be stored in the cache okay at any given time only some blocks in which the main memory are held in the cache uh, which blocks in the main memory are in the cache is determined by a mapping function okay so i repeat so which blocks of the main memory what is the content of the main memory that has to be got into the uh, into which blocks of the cache okay so that is been determined by using a mapping function i repeat at any given time only some blocks in the main memory are held in the cache which blocks is in the main memory are in the cache is determined by a mapping function so the mapping functions uh, efficiently determine how memory blocks are placed in the cache okay next uh, we were discussing about the cache mapping at any given time only some blocks in the main memory are held in the cache so which blocks in the main memory are in the cache is determined by a mapping function so mapping function determines how memory blocks are can be placed in the cache okay so so this particular mapping function is illustrated in this particular figure so you are having this is the mem uh, main memory the uh, main memory is represented by the following addresses so the content of this particular see here this particular block can be mapped into some block of the cache so which block can be mapped to into which block of main memory can should be placed or mapped to which block of the cache memory so that itself it is called as the mapping function okay so this is the address mapping function which is going to effectively determine the um, uh, existence of the main memory in the uh, main memory block in the cache right so there are three types of uh, mapping functions that is uh, uh, 
uh, defined for the cache memory. So, three mapping functions which is called as the direct mapping, associative mapping, set associative mapping. Okay. So, we shall try to uh, study in detail each one. So, next first is the direct mapping. So, as the name itself indicates, so this is called as a direct mapping. So, here this is the content of the main memory. Imagine now the size of the main memory. Okay. So, size of the main memory it is 64k each containing 16k words. Uh, now, it has been organized in the form of uh, block 0 to 4096 blocks numbered from block 0 to block 496. Similarly, this is the cache uh, which is uh, capable of storing how many blocks are there? Blo 128 blocks are there each capable of storing 16 bits of uh, information or what we call the 16 bit word. Right. So, here this now the effective uh, the direct mapping technique tells that see they, there are 4096 blocks of main memory. It cannot be mapped into all the blocks cannot be stored 4096 cannot be stored into the blocks here. Okay. Only 128 blocks are there in the cache memory. Right. So, therefore, we are going to depending upon the locality of reference. So, this uh, blo uh, direct mapping tells that we have to uh, block j. So, uh, it is based direct mapping technique, it is based on the formula what you are going to call it as the, uh, it is called as the, so this is called as the direct mapping technique as we have seen this is the memory layout and this is called as the cache uh, memory. Uh, so, we are having how many cache lines or what is number of cache blocks here, 128. So, similarly here the in the main memory there are 4096 blocks numbered from 0 to 4, uh, 4095. So, according to the direct mapping uh, technique, so here we are required to block the uh, direct mapping tells that we have to apply this particular uh, formula block a j of main memory has to be uh, mapped to j modulo 128 of the cache. So, here why 128? Because there are 128 blocks in the cache. So, you are going to apply here j modulo 128. So, if there are some 256 blocks here, you have to consider j modulo 256. Okay. So, this is j modulo number of blocks, uh, number of cache blocks. So, here because it is 128 blocks, here we are going to take 128 blocks here, okay, j modulo 128, okay. As an example, block 0 of main memory, 0 modulo 128, you are going to get the value as 0. So, therefore, block 0 of main memory is mapped to block 0 of the cache. So, similarly, block 128, okay, 128, it is, uh, will also be mapped to 128. 128 modulo 128, the resultant operation uh, modulo will be 0. Uh, so, therefore, same 128 block is again mapped to block 0. So, similarly, 256 is again mapped to uh, block number uh, 0. So, in this way, more than one blocks can be mapped, more than one memory block uh, is mapped to the same cache blocks. So, this leads to uh, some problem called as the contention. Okay. However, this contention problem can be resolved using what we call the cache replacement algorithm. Okay. So, this more than one cache block is mapped on to the same uh, position in the cache. So, contention arises which can be resolved by the cache replacement algorithm. So, placement of block in cache is determined from the memory address. Okay. So, which block, okay. So, which block of main memory has to be placed into which, uh, uh, which block of main memory has to be placed in which cache can be determined using the uh, uh, memory address. For in the direct mapping, the memory address has been represented in this particular format shown here. It basically consists of three fields called as the uh, tag field, block field and the word field. Okay, so, the number here represents the number of bits needed to represent the particular field. Okay, so, now we shall try to see uh, uh, how many bits are required to represent uh, the each of the field here and what is the significance of each field. 
Okay, so before that, uh, again, uh, just a quick review of the particular mapping technique here. So remember, the main memory blocks are arranged in this particular manner and in the cache. So according to the direct mapping technique, it tells that any block of main memory can be mapped to uh, this particular cache using this particular formula called as the uh, block J of main memory can be mapped to J modulo 128, J, J means this particular module. So now for example, if I want 257, 257 modulo 128. So you will get the resultant as 1. So therefore, block 257 will be mapped to block 1. Okay. So therefore, here, uh, so this is what uh, the particular map, uh, direct mapping technique tells that by using this particular formula, I uh, modulo uh, number of cache, cache lines or number of cache blocks. So in this case, it is 128. So therefore, we have made use of 128 blocks here. Okay. So next, we are having uh, what the we have to understand how to uh, uh, how to represent uh, this uh, number of bits in each of the particular field and uh, what is the significance of each of the bit. So the memory is divided into three fields. So every uh, addressing format here it is having um, uh, every mapping technique it is having its own format here. The direct addressing memory uh, address it is going to differ from uh, the other two techniques. So it is very important to remember the address format of the respective mapping technique, right? Okay. So the uh, memory address is divided into three fields. Okay. So first lower order four bits determine how one of the sixteen words in a block. Okay, it is determining the words. Uh, uh, okay, so this determines. So this it is going to uh, determine the words, number of words out of sixteen. Which word is defined here? So that is represented using the four bit. Okay. So next is seven bit. What do you mean by the seven bit block number? So which uh, uh, cache block is resident in which? Uh, which main memory block is resident into which class uh, cache block? Right. So when a new block is brought into the cache, so next 7 bits. So these 7 bits, block bits, it determine which cache block this new memory block is placed into. Okay. So, uh, so that is the significance of the block 7 and block, okay, which are 7 only in this particular case. For this example, depending upon the memory size and the cache size, here, because how many blocks are there here? Total 128. So 128. So here 128. Okay, how we are going to represent 128? 128 is nothing but 2 power of 7. Therefore, we require 7 bits to represent the particular cache blocks here. Right. So next is the tag bit. So what do you mean by the tag bit here? So this tag bit it is going to identify uh, the which of the 32 blocks. Okay, so I told you in the previous case, in the previous, uh, in the previous example, you have seen this particular which of these uh, uh, four out of four thousand thirty six. Okay, so uh, these uh, four thousand ninety six blocks have to be mapped to one twenty eight. So this tag field identifies uh, the resident of this main block into the cache block. I repeat which main block which of the main memory block is resident and which is, and which of the main memory block is mapped to which cache block so that has been identified by the tag bit right so that is called as the tag bit so this higher order 5 bits determine which of the possible 32 blocks is currently present in the cache okay why 32 blocks here because in the previous case as i told you the memory the memory size here the memory size here how many 4096 divided by 128 you are going to get the total of 32 blocks so this 32 blocks which of the 32 block is resident in which block of the cache so that can be identified by this 32 by the tag okay so therefore 32 uh, this uh, 5 bit is used to represent identify that particular thing so that is the significance of the tag bit right so this tag bit this is called as a tag bit higher order 5 bits determine which of the 32 blocks 
is currently present in the tag. So, this is called as the tag bit, right. So, uh, this is the memory address for a direct mapping. I summarize the direct mapping. So, in the direct mapping technique, so we have to see that modulo uh, any block of the main memory can be mapped to uh, the cache block provided using the formula j modulo number of uh, cache blocks. So, in this case it was 128. So, we were applying uh, block uh, that is uh, j modulo 128. Okay. So, the next here it is going to demonstrate the particular what you call the uh, uh, direct mapping technique. right? So, if this is the address of the main memory you can see this address. So, these bits are used to what you call these bits are used uh, these are the address to fetch the particular cache block. right? So, these are the tags. So, these are the uh, few tag bits that we, this were used. So, this tag so, this the tags that are present the information present in the address uh, in the memory address it is compared against the tags that are stored in the cache. Okay. So, compare against this tag and this the uh, tag that is present. So, when it is a match, okay, so the, then the relevant data is been retrieved. Okay. So, this is what we call it as a mapping technique direct mapping technique. Okay. So, similarly, we are having uh, uh, direct mapping with blocks equal to uh, number of blocks here is equal to 16. So, here you can see now 16 blocks are there, block size is equal to 16. So, here uh, this particular technique tells that here, so same uh, this is the uh, uh, address, address of the <coughs> cache block. Okay, where the particular block is resident and to identify the relevant uh, position of this particular thing we use this uh, tag. Okay. So, this okay, from the memory address the tag is being taken and also the address from the tag is taken <coughs> it is compared and whenever a match is found that the data is said to be given. right? <coughs> okay. So, here the illustration of how the direct mapping is going to happen. So, here we are having uh, the direct mapping. <coughs> so, here the main memory address it is being uh, divided into 5 bit tag, 7 bit block word and 4 bit uh, this address word address. So, we are having the tag bit. Okay. So, the information in the tag bit is this one and the block this one and the, the four uh, this particular thing four is called as the uh, word four bits to represent the word. Okay. <coughs> so, here what we are having the tag this particular information as we can see this is what we call the tag bit. So, tag is equal to 1 1 the binary value here this is this represents the tag bit out of this 16. Okay. The first five bits represent the tag. So, next uh, these 7 bits represent the block. Okay. So, if you are going to convert this into decimal, so this will be block 127 uh, in the 127 block of the cache. Okay. And what is this particular uh, word uh, 1100? So, that is equal to 12, the 12th word of the 127th block in the cache. Okay. So, this is an illustration of what we call the direct mapping technique. So, next we are having what we call the associative mapping. Okay. So, without the need, so though it is simple to this method is simple, uh, flexible, but it is uh, uh, because of the calculations, uh, cal calculations for the modulo, it is uh, said to be uh, le uh, less flexible when compared to the uh, other things. In order to rule out this, another mapping techniques have been defined. So, those are called as the associative mapping technique. right? So, this uh, mapping technique is more flexible compared to the previous uh, what we call the direct mapping technique, because any uh, any block of the main memory can be uh, mapped to any available cache block without the need for applying uh, J modulo 128 or uh, any other uh, formulation. right? So, main memory block can be placed into any cache position 
uh, okay. So, that is the uh, concept of uh, associative mapping. Okay. So, here same uh, memory exa size example has been chosen here, uh, memory of size 64 k into 16 uh, uh, words per uh, particular block. So, which is the total size uh, here and the memory uh, size is nothing but 4096 blocks of main memory has to be mapped to a block a cache block of 128. Okay. So, any block can be mapped into any available free block. right? So, this particular uh, with this form of uh, mapping it is called as associative mapping. So, here a main memory can be placed into any cache position memory address is divided into two fields here. I told you each mapping technique memory address it is going to differ. right? So, here we are having only two bit field here there is no uh, another uh, tag field uh, sorry there is no another field here except uh, here we are having a tag field and the word field. right? So, uh, two fields are defined here. So, the main memory address is divided into 12 bit tag field and 4 bit 4 for the word. Okay. Why 4? Because we are going to take 16, uh, 16 bits that is uh, 16 bit is the word length. So, 16 is nothing but 2 power of 4. So, therefore, 2 power of 4 is nothing but we require 4 bits here out of total 16 bit word. So, remaining uh, uh, 16 minus 4, 12 bits require for what you call the word tag length. right? I repeat how you are going to define this particular how many bits how you are going to determine this one now. Okay, This the determination can be done here based on what you are going to call see here because the word length it is it is equal to 16, 16 is equal to 2 power of 4. right? So, therefore, you use this particular 4 bits to represent this. right? So, the total length of this particular uh, field it is nothing but 16. Okay. So, this is equal to what is the size of the uh, word here? It is equal to 16. Okay. So, that means you require 16 bits to represent the word address whenever you are having this one. Okay. How you are going to determine? How you are going to determine whether it is 16 bits or how many bits you require for memory address? You have to consider the total size of the memory. So, what is the total size of the memory? 4096. If you are going to convert this one, it is 2 power of 12 into uh, how into word length. What what is the word length now? 2 power of 12. It is 2 power of 4. So, this 2 2, two power of 12 into 2 power of 4 it is equal to 2 power of 16 right altogether. So, it is 2, 2 power of 16 you are going to get. So, therefore, you require 16 bits to represent the memory. Okay. So, this total memory length it is said to be 16 bits. So, that is the way how to decide uh, what is the total length of this. I again repeat but divide <coughs> you have to take into the number of blocks into the number of words okay number of word size so that gives you the total memory size right so in that again depending upon the mapping technique you have to divide it into a 12 bit ma uh, 12 bit depending upon the type of mapping you have to divide the total number uh, number of memory bits into its respective fields okay so because this is an associative mapping you are required to divide it into a tag and 4. So, how the division is being done? Because it is a 16 bit word. So, it is 2 power of 4 it is equal to 16. So, we require 4 bits to represent the word field. right? So, 16 minus 4 is equal to 12. So, therefore, you require this one. So, this is called as the associative mapping technique which is said to be more flexible compared to this. But the drawback with this particular scheme is that because whenever a particular uh, required for searching for a given memory block, it has to search all the 128 blocks. So, b that is associative searching is required uh, in this particular mapping technique. So, that is the drawback observed in this particular uh, associative mapping. So, 
next form of uh, what we call the next form of uh, particular associative uh, next form of cache mapping technique the third form it is called as the set associative mapping right so uh, uh, combining in order to uh, resolve the differences and uh, the problems associated with the uh, with the direct mapping and the associative mapping combination of both uh, the direct mapping and associative mapping it is the third technique called as the set associative mapping so in this particular set associative mapping in the set associative mapping we are having uh, the particular the sets are divided into uh, the sets are divided so this is an exam before i go into the set associative so again here an illustration of the associative mapping technique see here you are having a cache location here uh, this is the cache location so this is your uh, uh, particular address so any particular okay address whatever is there in this particular field okay the main memory address is been determined so this is a, a total tag field and this is the data field okay so therefore can have any number of locations and uh, uh, this uh, technique uh, it is called directly we can try to map any of the uh, uh, we can map any of the block with any of the particular thing right okay so so here is again a, a illustration of the associative mapping so here you are having a 12 bit uh, tag and a 12 bit uh, uh, sorry 4 bit word so this is the main memory address so 12 bit so this equivalent value has been written here and 4 bit so here what happens here this 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 value represents the tag information and uh, this represents the word data so the 12th word of the block is in the cache right so this is the what we call the uh, associative mapping right okay as i told you in order to rule out the differences between the uh, resolve the particular uh, issues that are connected with the direct mapping and the um, associative mapping another form of mapping is called as the cache mapping function called as the set associative ma mapping so in this particular set associative mapping so the common thing uh, the, the important uh, uh, modification what you can observe here in the cache is that so the blocks are arranged in terms of set sets set uh, two you can uh, uh, group uh, two blocks of the cache into one set or uh, three uh, four blocks in terms of two power you can try to arrange the particular uh, thing into the uh, particular cache blocks into each of the sets right so here block 0 block 1 total 128 blocks uh, 128 blocks are there so if 128 blocks are there if you are going to arrange two blocks per set so how many total sets you are going to get 128 by 2 so that is equal to 63 uh, 64 sets starting from set 0 to set 63 okay so this is what the arrangement of modification that is applied in the hardware with respect to what you call the set associative mapping okay so in this particular thing now what is the difference uh, how you can map a memory uh, main memory module to that of the cache okay so the it is same as the that of what you call the modulo uh, j modulo 128 okay provided uh, this particular block j now has to be uh, you have to apply according to the direct scheme it tells that block 0 uh, block 0 is equal to j modulo 128 that is 0 modulo 128 okay so now this particular block j block j of main memory that is block 0 uh, modulo 128 okay what is the resultant of this the resultant of this is equal to 0 the resultant of this operation will be 0 that means the block 0 can be should have been mapped to block 0 only but according to the set associative block 0 can be mapped either to block 0 or it can be mapped to block 1 provided block 1 and block 0 should be in the same set okay so both of them should belong to the same set so that is what we call it as a set associative mapping okay so i repeat 
so block 0 can be mapped to either block 0 or block 1 of set 0 only ok so similarly block 1 can be mapped to block uh, 2 or 3 of set 1 right so uh, depending upon uh, sorry block 1 has to be mapped to block 1 of set 0 block 1 have to be mapped because 1 modulo 128 uh, resultant 1 so it can be mapped either to block 0 or block 1 of the set 0 ok so this is what we call it as the set associative mapping where the number of blocks how did you get the number of uh, this because 128 blocks are there divided by number of blocks per uh, uh, per a particular number of blocks ok uh, divided by number of blocks per set ok this is equal to total number of sets you are going to get it as the 64 so therefore you are going to get 60 uh, set 0 six, uh, set 1 to set 63 right so this is what the arrangement of what we call this particular arrangement of the uh, particular block ok so here <coughs> So, this particular block set associative block. So, one of the uh, words each has uh, 16 is equal to 2 power of 4 words uh, points to a particular set in the cache. Okay. How many sets are there here? It is equal to two, uh, uh, 128 by 2, it is equal to 64. So, this particular 64, if you are going to convert it into 2 power 6, it is equal to sorry in terms of 2 power it is 2 power of 6 right so therefore here if you can see the modif the main memory address is divided into three fields here so what are those three fields here tag field set field and the word field okay tag field set field and the word field so this particular tag field set field and the word field so here it contains respectively 6 bits 6 bits and 4 bits so, this is the memory address whenever you are having a set associative mapping. Okay. So, in the set associative mapping, you should remember the memory address consists of three fields here. Because the set is uh, associated here, the, the, you have to uh, include the set field in this particular memory address. Okay. So, for this particular example, because there are six uh, total number of sets are 64, 64 is equal to 2 power of 6. So, therefore, you have to take this 6 to represent, uh, you, you have to take this particular 6 to represent uh, the 64 sets. Okay. So, what is the number of memory, uh, what is the word, word length is equal to 16 bits. So, therefore, here again it is 4 bits, right. So, totally what is this total memory size, same memory size, what is the memory size here? It is 16 bits, total memory size, memory bit uh, it is equal to 16. So, therefore, 6 plus 4 is equal to 10, uh, 16 minus 10 is 6. So, therefore, our tag field is now containing 6 bits as it is shown here, right. So, this is what we call it as a set associative mapping, ok. 6 tag bits is used to check if the desired block is present, which desired block, desired main block, which desired block of main memory is resident in the cache block, right. So, that is called as the cache memory, right, that is called as the set associative mapping, right, ok. So, this is what uh, the particular next example, here we are going to illustrate the uh, uh, set associative mapping, the address here. As you can see here, the data uh, can be present here, uh, it is associated with uh, two tags here. Okay. So, the two-way set associative, what do you mean by two-way set associative? Uh, because it is uh, two uh, blocks belong to the same set, this is called as a two-way set associative. The whatever the address is there, the address at this particular thing is being taken and uh, tag 1, okay. so this is called as a tag 1, tag 2, uh, b which represents two different uh, uh, blocks within the same set. Okay. 
So, this particular thing you can see how the mapping is going to happen both the tags are taken and it is compared again as this particular tag that is present in the address if both any of the thing matches it is been uh, taken as that as the uh, uh, that is the particular data ok. So, this is an illustration of set associative mapping and here we are having the same thing illustration uh, set associative mapping here we are having tag set and a word field the main memory address here we are having 6 bit 6 bit and 4 ok which is the following data. So, tag bit so this information it is uh, representing the tag. So, this represents the 64 sorry 63 in the 63rd set of the cache and uh, this is the 12th word of the 63 cache. So, the if this is the effective address of the main memory and uh, using this and we are applying the set associative mapping. So, this is what the final uh, location of the main memory in the cache.